Okay, ladies and gents, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the making of the Matrix Awakens demo for Unreal Engine 5. Let's go check it out. Wow. You still got it. Like riding a bike, they say. The Matrix Crazy. posits this idea of photoreal and immersive technology, Whoa. blurring the line so that we can't discern what is real and what is artificial. You guys realize Welcome to the Matrix. Uh, kind of Keanu is like, like 60 years old, now, right? Now, with the Unreal Engine, you can get much closer to the idea of the Matrix than one could do in film. Do you know about this? Yeah. It's all it's supposed to be a little unreal. We're at a point where a modern video game Love console that. can generate the kind of imagery that we generated on the movie 20 years ago, but in real time, interactively in front of your eyes. You know, it always used to be you'd have the script and then you'd have the storyboard and then you did the previs and then you would film it and you'd, everything would be filmed against and the green screen. Go and, then and then you gotta go poop. And you gotta go pee. A year pee. and a half later, you would start to see your shots get. Everyone's got an accent. It just makes it so and interesting. Now you can do stuff in the Unreal Engine and render it out in real time. Oh my cameras! Really did y'all see like that? Filmmaking is still in the dinosaur age. Ready, everybody, and action. 20 years ago, we asked ourselves whoa, how long whoa, it would whoa. be. Are you kidding me? That's coming from that microphone? What is that? Did you hear that quality that coming out of that mic? 20 years ago, we asked ourselves how long that's it would be. That's insane, bro. Could be changed as now, I'm saying that's insane because I've always wondered how to record audio when doing mocap because you have this here in front of you. So for me, I would use lavalier mics, and they really don't sound that good because it captures an entire room. Um, but my goodness, what is that mic? That sounds so amazing. Nice hair. As easily as we change clothes. Well, okay, so I'm just having to stop this so I don't have to go back and talk about it. So whenever the Matrix demo came out, I think last year or whatever, I talked about 4D animation. This is 4D animation, which I think is going to be the future of facial animation. So instead of tweaking hand animating a face, you're actually capturing it, kind of like clay and mold. You're creating a mold of that face. And as you can see right here, this is the performance captured everything. And then all you have to do from there is use that mesh on your character. That's why this demo here, the Matrix demo, and the uh, Unity, and then the Unity's enemies demo, they look amazing because of 4D animation. Now, unfortunately, 4D animation is not available to mere mortals, uh, so we have to wait maybe 15, 20 years till we can get access to this technology, but my goodness, 4D looks good. Um, additionally, it looks like they're using XSense. This is the Link suit. Pretty nice. So we go ahead and press play again. This demo was unique in that we actually got Love Keanu that. Reeves, we got Carrie Ann Moss, and they shot footage for us with Lana Wachowski. Manus gloves. Okay. All right, Manus. I see you. Lana is such a great writer, so she wrote this great little story between wow. Keanu and I. You still got it. Lana Yo, that loves audio. The pushes the envelope, so she was totally into it. The whole idea behind this demo was to question what is real. And we actually have a few shots of Keanu right next to Keanu digitally recreated. Hi. Quick tip. You know, I know he's real. In Unreal Engine 5, you can't render Groom in reflections. He would be bald. I'm Keanu Reeves. We're asking you, do you know which version is real? I sometimes miss this version of us. Me too. And then Look at that really facial, that little lip movement Trinity, captured it, you know? Time aside, de aging is like one of the hardest things oh, man. to do. And it's like Keanu is different. He doesn't look exactly the same as he did 20 years ago. He does. You know, we're like, oh, God, we need, we need a reference. Kim was like, hey, Lana, we got, I got some files to, for you to look at. And it was. I love how excited she is, because I'd be excited too if I was looking at those freaking models. models. They look the amazing. The scanning, the performance that Keanu gave for the Matrix Reloaded. Can we have it? to help build the young version of Keanu that we have in this demo. <clears throat> the hell are you doing back there? Sorry, I was told this is a sim preparing me to fight the system. Right on. 
We Patience, wanted to play a character, and we didn't feel that it was right for the player to play Neo or Trinity. We Why not? To feel that they're going on this journey with their Why audience. can't we play? We have a system called MetaHuman. So MetaHuman is our digital human creation system. We and need more the first pants. exemplary character that we put out was this character, Ada. I am a metahuman. And we're like, well, why don't we just take Ada and give her a Matrix Oh costume? my god, look at that and, outfit. You know, because we're all so well connected from making the first movies, I just, you know, I emailed Kim Barra and I'm like, hey Kim, we have this demo. We Must be a nice. Costume. We need a costume for our principal character in this. Do you, want, do you want to come up with a costume so it's authentically Matrix? I found up a whole lot of old pen and ink drawings. Yo, the resources the these guys have to I make kept. this. They were nothing that we used. Out of this like world. Old stuff. And so I kind of fished those out and started doing stuff based on some of them. She brought back Ed Natividad, who's one of the concept painters from the original movie, and he basically did a paint over on That's our character. That's so sick. Like, look okay, at that hair, that's man. That's our character. We're called her Io, and you look at the posters that we made from the digital characters, and it looks just like they've come that's out of a Matrix so... Reloaded photo session. Hmm. Oh my gosh, that's from the same the roof the I used. When you knew that we wanted to create something that expanded on some of these ideas. Epic. And there was this mega city in the, in the Matrix. When we designed the city, we decided to pick some of the most beautiful buildings with a lot of intricate shapes. Dude. And usually that's something that Why is can't I have that when accent? you have to do something in real time. Because it takes a lot of polygon and it takes a lot of computer power to generate that much detail everywhere. And that's where Nine Eye of technology of virtual and German, geometry comes into British. play. Virtualized geometry means you don't have to create levels of detail anymore. You just create a high res model and you put it in the game. So the engine behind the scenes figures out exactly how much detail we should see, and the artist doesn't have to worry about that on the back end. You're not going to have modelers sit down and model every building, every window, every window frame. You have some, some typical styles that the Guessing artists like. Guessing it is Houdini person. You put variations through a procedural system, and then Houdini takes over and builds uh. up all the buildings, and even the side roads are built based on a rule, so you don't have to draw every road even. So that whole city gets built up by just a few major arteries that are drawn by the artist. So it's a small team that's building up this huge city. In the original trilogy, crazy bro. and things that are sort of mathematical feeling were subliminally intertwined in a lot of things. So for Awakens, we wanted to have that feel again. We didn't want to look completely like a naturally grown organic city. We wanted it to look like something that would have grown in the Matrix, something that machines would have put together. And that Ooh, was something that a lot like of this guy. us to do, to make sure that a little bit of that pattern was visible. So we basically designed the city as a four kilometer by four kilometer, and then we designed it two main downtown, and then we created a large freeway to connect those two downtowns. This is like it's kind of remind us of the, the best way to show off soon. an engine. In terms of the camera work, the we scale the of this is Matrix insanity. And the one beat that we spent the most time looking at was the Matrix Reloaded car chase. It was very important for us to keep the same language of camera that we saw in the original Matrix. We were looking at how they filmed the chase, for example, and then how much the camera is actually shaking inside the car. And we wanted to make sure that that's the same amount of shake. And then so when it comes good. to the lighting, same idea. We wanted to make sure we are close to the movies. Low man. So we have Lumen, which is global illumination, meaning that it's real-time lighting, and it actually works like light behaves in the real world. For example, if we put a sun into the world, the sun lights up the road, the road then bounces that light back, and we get nice lighting that actually looks like it does in the real world. And then obviously, you cover everything with the green that Matrix is famous for. The mindset was all <laughs> that looks like my short thing. films right like there. Lana would have shot it, but going faster. We got some actors on a stage. We oh, time out, time out, pause, pause, pause. Going faster. Uh, I see, them in a car. I drove them. We got some actors on a stage. This is cool. So again, one of the questions I have when it comes to mocap is like car rigs, and this looks like a solid one. It's made of wood, so you won't get magnetic interference. I guess that's why they did it. That is a solid one, and additionally, it doesn't move. Because you don't want your seat moving while you're mocapping. That's awesome. Probably a grip made this. Because it's brilliant. Stage, we blocked it out. I put them in a car. I drove them down the street. I put cameras on that. Some of y'all were actually asking me how to do this. I'm going to try to make a tutorial on how to do okay, that. Because it's actually really fun. And then the best part is once you have found the place where you want to do the action, you spawn the car into the world, you grab one of the controller, and then you play the car, and then you start Nobody to drive plays in those streets. with controllers and anymore, brother. Nobody plays with controllers anymore, brother. 
two or three times, maybe there's a better acceleration here, or maybe we can drift around here. And when you're happy with the action, you can lock that action and then refine and place your camera around that stunt. So it was easy for me to be able to put a camera on something and get all the beautiful Wait, time out. final. Time out, time out, time out. I just want to know in the comments how y'all were able to get rid of that nav mesh error up here. Let me know, please. Easy for me to be able to put a camera on something and get all the beautiful final picture in camera. If I put a camera on Keanu God, and that is talking, real time. That car, looks amazing, hour, dude. Look at look at the little around, stitch on top of his focus, lip. Just like a live action DP would have. It's oh pretty my God, dude. Can we have this I think this a big mode? part of it too is just the pacing of it. Finding that pace, finding that edit, making it feel more Matrix-like. We've gone like another click above what we did in Amazing. Matrix Reloaded with crazy amounts of agents and cars ramming each other and flying up in the air. So all of that is simulated. Every time you play Chaos. that in the demo, it is different because it's using mathematics and physics and particle effects and explosions. It's chaos. It's a fatal physics system. It's called chaos. All programmed in a way to behave as close as we could do. God, the that it's nasty. Be and being in the action. And it worked because the first time the people are playing it, you drive, I'll shoot. And they realize that they have control and it's interactive, but it looks exactly like the thing that they were just watching before. That's the aha moment. People are like, wait, 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 oh, wait, I can play this? this so not many people would probably know what he's talking about, but back in the day, a cinematic cutscene doesn't look like gameplay whatsoever. So for y'all out there, just in case you didn't know, back then, graphics looked like crap. They have control and it's interactive, but it looks exactly like the thing that they were just But now, for. a cutscene can look like uh -huh. gameplay. Wait, wait, uh -huh. wait, wait, oh, wait, I can play this? This is crazy. We'll take on this fun absolutely there. remarkable that Unreal 5 is capable of producing something that feels real and exquisitely detailed down to the most... Look at that detail. chaos destruction, bro. My GPU would no melt. Something like this. Melt. This okay, so that's it. A lot of exciting stuff again. Whoever thought about this making an Unreal Engine 5 release demo based on the Matrix should definitely get a race because this is the best way, honestly, I've ever seen an engine release done. It's amazing. But yeah, what do y'all think about this demo and behind the scenes? Now, I like watching these because I learn a lot from really just watching these videos. Whenever they're doing the behind the scenes of the UI and things like that, I pick up some stuff. But also, I wanted to see the mocap stuff as well, seeing that 4D in action. Wow. Unreal Engine 5 is still pretty young and fairly new. I really can't wait for the future of this engine.